Hello everyone and welcome back to this day in history, our nightly look back at a specific day in history, where we take a look back at a specific day in history, examine the events of that day, the historic ramifications of those events, and we also take a look at some people that were born and some people that died on that day. As always, if you have not yet, hit the subscribe button the bell notification icon to be alerted anytime I post new content, and tell a friend. And now, without any further ado, March 22nd. On this day in 1630, the Massachusetts Bay Colony would outlaw the possession of cards, dice, and gaming tables. Um, and I think this is a perfect opportunity for me to talk about historic ramifications. And context. The Bay Colony was ruled by the Puritans, and the Puritans were very fervent in their religious beliefs. There's nothing wrong with that. I personally would not share them with their views, uh, probably on any aspect of their religious beliefs, but they were very firm in their beliefs. Where it diverges, in my opinion, is their belief that they should be able to legislate their morality on everyone else. Um, eight years later, they would ex on the same day, they would expel a member of their own sect uh, for religious dissent. Um, uh, a lady by the name of Ann Hutchinson and 58 of her followers. They had to leave Massachusetts. Uh, many of them fled to Rhode Island, a state that had religious freedom. I'm, I'm sorry, a colony that had religious freedom. But um, she, um, as I said, was banished. But I want to get back to this event eight years prior to Miss Hutchinson. You can still see the effects of this today uh, with many states, groups, and politicians arguing in favor of legislating morality, whether it be on gambling, lotteries, uh, pornography, uh, prostitution even, and to an extent, um, same-sex marriage, and abortion. Um, these are people that oppose these practices, like, you know, choices, uh, interests that people have out of a moral conviction. When you hear someone um, rail against gambling, it, <clears throat> it is almost always nine times out of ten, couched in religious fervor. Um, the lottery is the same thing. I remember in 1999 when Alabama had a referendum on the lottery. At the time, I went to a Baptist church and the preacher just railed against gambling as immoral and against the Bible. Hashtag shocker, in the Bible Belt, it was voted down. Alabama remains one of only three states without a lottery. Three. Um, I hope that one day Alabama gets a lottery because I really believe it would help education in this state. But, in my, you can, you can see the parallel between Massachusetts banning cards in 1630 and Alabama in 1999, voting down a lottery. This is 390 years ago. And we're still feeling the effects of it today. In 2020. Um, there is a foot, a move, in the conservative movement in the United States to have William Barr, who is, as this video is being filmed, the current United States Attorney General, target producers of pornography um, in the United States um, under obscenity laws. And they say they're going only after the most extreme cases. 
Oh, this is the really horrible stuff. Well, in my opinion, if the material is between two consenting adults and viewed by adults, there's no need for the government to step in. At all. I don't believe there is this make-believe community standard. Um, I think that is hogwash, and I think that's something they really need to revisit. Because what one person might consider obscene, another person might not. And in my opinion, it's not the government's place to say. So, um, I think this event is a very detrimental event um, in history because it's going to lead uh, to many other events in history where the government comes in and says, we know better, we're going to legislate this morality on you, and we know better. Births that occurred on this day. In 1934, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Orrin Hatch was born. Uh, senator Hatch served as a senator from Utah from 1977 until 2019. Hatch is the longest-serving Republican senator in U.S. history and the longest-serving senator from the state of Utah. In 2015, when Republicans retook control of the United States Senate, Hatch became Senate pro tempore. Um, he was third in line to the presidency after the Speaker of the House I'm sorry, after the Vice President and the Speaker of the House. Um, Hatch was a conservative senator, but also seen as a pragmatic deal maker and someone that could work across the aisle. He is very noted for his friendship with Senator Edward Kennedy. Um, and when he ran for the Senate, he ran as, I'm going to go to Washington and stand up to Teddy Kennedy. I'm going to fight for Utah values. When he got to Washington, him and Ted Kennedy became friends. And he also was chosen to speak at Ted Kennedy's funeral when, the Senator, Ken when Senator Kennedy passed away in 2009. So, um, just a very pragmatic deal maker. I want to touch on two aspects of Senator Hatch's career that are very um, illuminating to me. Um, he was a member of the Judiciary Committee, and when, during the presidency of Bill Clinton, the first vacancy on the court occurred, and Bill Clinton was speaking with Hatch, and Hatch recommended to Clinton that he nominate Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Even though Hatch knew Ginsburg was a liberal jurist and would vote differently than he would on many issues on the court, he believed that she was a well-qualified jurist and deserved to be on the court, the highest court in the land. And of course, Clinton would nominate her and she would be confirmed. He would vote in favor of her nomination, not only in the committee, but in the full Senate. Um... Another issue is um, LGBT rights. Early in his career, um, Hatch was a very outspoken opponent of LGBT rights. He even uh, thought it should be illegal uh, for homosexuals to teach school. In 2018, during Pride Month, uh, Senator Hatch gave a very impassioned speech on the Senate floor honoring Pride Month and talked about the stigma that LGBT youth face, LGBT youth suicide, and, and many other issues and, and became quite emotional during it. And I think that says a lot about how a politician can change over time and really 
become a better person on issues and, and evolve. Uh, I know moments ago I was lambasting people legislating morality. But when they turn a 360 degrees and come to see that the views they held previously were wrong and hurtful, I think it's also wise to honor that and really say this is a, a good person and someone that we should honor. Um, and I think Orrin Hatch is definitely deserving of that. I always, um, when I would see Orrin Hatch on TV, would stop and watch the interviews with him because he, he seemed to me like someone that took his job as a senator very seriously and is someone uh, that I think uh, we need more Orrin Hatches um, in the U.S. Senate. Um, he would be replaced in the Senate uh, by Mitt Romney, who I've mentioned on this program before I'm a huge fan of. Um, so that seat, in my opinion, is still held by a very honorable public servant. Deaths that occurred on this day. In 2016, at the age of 46, then Toronto City Councilman Rob Ford died. Uh, between 2010 and 2014, uh, Ford served as the mayor of the city. Ford um, was a very colorful mayor um, that would often get embroiled in controversy uh, for his tendency to um, say very provocative and sometimes offensive things. Uh, but the real reason he came to international acclaim, unfortunately, uh, was that Mr. Ford had a substance abuse problem um, and would be videotaped um, using some some substances that he shouldn't have. Uh, and he would seek treatment uh, for them later. Um, he was also very active in youth sports and... Um, his pallbearers um, at his funeral would be um, the boys that he coached um, football for. Um, his brother, Doug Ford, is the current uh, premier of the province of Ontario. A uh, premier in Canada is the equivalent of a governor in the uh, states, uh, essentially. Uh, it's a parliamentary system, and it's, it's a little bit different, so I'm not going to get into that on this video. I may make a video about Canada one day. Uh, but um, he is essentially the governor of uh, the province of Ontario. Uh, so, um, it, as I said, um, the Ford family is a, was and is a very prominent political family in Canada. Um and a uh, very powerful force um, inside the uh, Conservative Party of Canada. Um, but um, I think Rob Ford, uh, just a very interesting figure um, on the political stage in, in the Great White North. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great night.